Welcome back to Passion and Purpose. I want to take this chance to say thank you to all of you who have been showering me and my interviewees with so much love. Now you're about to meet a super confident leader of formidable intelligence, tenacity, who prides herself on being independent-minded and authentic to the core. It was in 1989 when she started her rendezvous with technology by defying all cultural expectations to study computer engineering. At a time when technology was not a preferred domain for women in our country, she chose to break the odds. She was one of the first few women in the batch of men at RV College of Engineering. She recalls that out of a batch of 3,000, there were only 54 women out of which 18 of them were in computer science, and she was one of them. She also has a master's in computer science from Boston University. Now, coming from an army background, growing up in multiple places, gifted her with the agility in disruptiveness, allowing her to understand and respect different people and different cultures. She is the director and head of technology for Tesco in India, she spearheads Tesco's constant endeavor to stay ahead of the retail technology solutions curve and is both on the Tesco Bengaluru board and the Tesco Bengaluru CSR board. She is a core committee member of NASCOM and CII. She is passionate about diversity and inclusion and is also an integral part of Grace Hopper. And when she is not leading high performing cross functional teams across three continents, she is a very hard lady to catch as she is busy chasing her next PB. Well, you learn about what PB means in the interview. You know, besides all these exceptional accolades and titles to her name, for me, it was really heartening to hear how some of her colleagues in Tesco think of her. Rajesh Ramesh describes her as a charismatic leader, evaluative, able to carefully and quickly analyze a situation and a person. Mark Gibson defines her as a fun, passionate, driven individual. Asha, who works very closely with her, says she's a very strong lady with a beautiful heart, very compassionate and down to earth. Well, I have always found her to be passionate, determined, focused, driven, and extremely authentic. And that's why I wanted to interview her today. So please help me welcome to Passion and Purpose, the one and only Vidya Lakshman. Wow. Um, thank you so much, Kavita. It is, uh, you really... You really made my day. It's such a beautiful introduction that you gave. And I'm so excited to be on Passion and Purpose because I've seen your shows um, or your broadcast uh, and I love it. And I've known you for quite some time and I know uh, how passionate you are about this. So when we started chatting the other day, I thought, I, you know, when am I going to get this opportunity? And here <laughs> I am. So thank you so much. Vidya, you won't believe it. When I first envisioned this uh, show, I made a list of 10 people I wanted on and you were number one. Wow. And I think it was during COVID times I'd called you, but I think you were busy and I think Tesco was going through its own uh, ups and downs. So you didn't take my call, but somehow we got connected last week and I would, I didn't, you know, hesitate to ask you if you wanted to be on the show. So thank you so much for being with us today. That's what I like about you, Kavita. When you want something, you have to ask. Anyway, the worst case scenario is a no, and you know that. And if you don't ask, you will not get. And that's something that you have, uh, perseverance, and also uh, bold enough to ask. So yes. good. And I always tell the people that I meet, if you don't ask, the answer is always no. So just ask. So take a yes. no. If it, and if it's a yes, it could change your life. So yes. you know, yeah. it's so important. So Vidya, I mean, there have been so many interviews out there about you. And most people know everything about Vidya Lakshman. But still, um, some of my viewers might be new to you. So I just want you to share um, what made you 
who you are today from your childhood to now who have been your influences have you had role models that shaped you to be vidya lakshman the super super confident woman who sits in front of me today really um the, the first time i met you i met you at a party i didn't even know who you were and that was the best part and i'm so glad we met that way because otherwise i would have been you know all these things would have come oh my god she's this she's that i just met you at a party and i thought my god i you know i wish more people were like her so please go ahead and share your story so that other women can get inspired to be like you so kavita that's a great question i think there are two things which influenced me one is my dad's career i never knew i would say this uh, but since my dad was in the army and he was transferred every couple of years and some uh, sometimes less than a year i had to change at least uh i think if i'm right around nine schools in 12 years of my education and during those times i didn't realize um how it would have an impact on me because one is adjusting and if you were to really look at technology now agility is the most important thing and i think army life taught me to be agile uh the second bit is uh being bold and taking risks that's another thing which played an important role because when you're going when you're getting transferred it's a new environment always you don't know you you become very comfortable uh, with change because you have no choice and you have no choice to take risks or being bold i think those two have played very important uh, role in my life um and now having asked who are my influencers obviously when i was young it started off with my mom because she is a very well educated person uh she has three masters she is more educated than my dad um and uh, and my dad has been a wonderful partner who always pushed my mom to not stay at home and say even though he was transferred he would keep encouraging her to wear the clothes that she felt comfortable to not be bothered about the society because my mom is a typical tam bram i a lady you know how it is uh, so very concerned about the society and i think my dad uh, played an important role in that and i think it was a good combination of both of them because at a very young stage uh, age uh, my parents were very clear that my brother and i would be treated equally so if i learned um, how to write, if uh, dance that's the only thing which my brother didn't do but everything else from sewing to embroidery to cleaning the house to cooking and he does much better than me by the way um <laughs> he has been involved and when my brother got a bike a motorbike even my dad got me a bike so that was the kind that we we shared so i got very used to equality from a young age uh, and i think that's why if you notice wherever i go i'm not scared to speak my mind because i expect the same kind of environment everywhere now coming back to role models um i think um, again it changes i don't have one role model per se but at a young age i used to look up to my brother when it came to sports mom dad obviously but if i were to look outside the family uh moving to us uh really helped me but before that i had an incident where i met kapil dev i met the whole cricket team okay. and i was uh, in my third year of engineering and when i met i noticed some of the cricketers were very arrogant but it was kapil dev who made me and my friend who was another student feel very comfortable and the way he treated it didn't matter uh, you know whether you ha- you were rich or where you belonged from he was equal and the way he spoke to all of us and i think he was my first role model if i were to say and he still is uh, and then afterwards all the managers that i met when i went to us and coming back to india if i were to say akila krishna uh, krishna kumar she is a lady who i really look up to uh, i look up to many people as i told you i have lot of my peers um but the colleagues mostly have hung, as you said i worked only with male colleagues let it be in college we were very outnumbered let it be at work and they have played uh, an important role in my life also so they're all influencers maybe not role models but definitely i have quite a few and in today's world who is your uh, role model in today's uh, leaders world leaders anyone do you look up to somebody and say okay i want to be like them or i want to learn something from them i want to meet them i don't know yeah 
um, I met uh, recently, like a two, uh, two years ago, uh, we, uh, we, uh, at Tesco, we do something called as Ignite. And we had invited Ravi Venkatesan, uh, who is ex um, Microsoft, and uh, he was also on the board of Infi. Then we had invited Kiran, who was the chairman of uh, ISRO, Rishabh Premji, uh, and Ma uh, Geeta Manjunath, who has developed this, she, who runs a startup. And I, I, I must say that I was so impressed with them. There's no one person that I really want uh, to become like, but I would like to get characters from each one of them to, for me to get to the next role I believe that but if if you were to really see ask me who is the business leader that I really follow I think Elon Musk he intrigues me some of the stuff that he's doing out of box thinking the way he is able to read different books um, uh, break the norm uh, I, I, I think he's the person that I really uh, follow quite a bit I'm sure you're going to be meeting him uh... One. I hope so. I, I I can just see you both meeting. <laughs> I hope it happens with you. I mean, uh, I'm sure after that he will want to take some characteristics from you too. So that'll be yes. great. <laughs> you sweet <laughs> Kavita. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you have um, in our one of our conversations, you have said to me that you know many leaders um, are not really authentic especially women leaders, you know, as they try to grow up in the corporate ladder, they try to fit in so hard and become popular and somewhere lose their authentic self. You know, can you tell us a little more about that? Because we hear a lot about it and uh, would love to know your uh, viewpoint on that. Yeah, this is uh, this is my personal opinion, Kavita, and I've noticed that I, I have, as you know, the kind of relationship that I share with you, if somebody asks, uh, ask me and they they make these comments saying that I'm very well networked. I actually, I, I build relationships and I love to observe what each one of you bring to the table because I'm looking at learning co uh, continuously. And many of the women leaders, when I have this one-on-one -on -one chat outside the corporate premise are very different. And then I've had an opportunity to be sitting on the same table uh, with them and uh, they, are unable to express what they truly believe in. Sometimes they just say things to fit in. And I think it's a lot of peer pressure, right? Not everybody, I know it is not easy to speak up. And that's one thing I've noticed. I've noticed both in men and women, it's not just, uh, just women, but more so it's applicable for women because we are um, sh in short, numbers in every level. I think currently, if we were to look at the corporate world, we know that uh, we, even though there are a lot of organizations making effort, just like our my organization, we try to hire 50-50% initially from the graduate school. But in a couple of years, it just goes down to 30%. Uh, mm -hmm. And then a few more years later, when you come into middle management, we are talking in 20s if we are lucky and it becomes less than 20s and by the time you get into senior management it's much much more lower we know the statistic shows around seven percent or something like that yes. um so it is and when you are and i can understand that um yes we are uh, we are in short numbers there uh, but people do respect when you're authentic People do respect diversity and if they don't, you have to educate them. And it's not so difficult because uh, I've, I've worked in quite a few places and I believe that you can build the culture what you want to. Uh, I, I don't know what to tell uh, the women leaders as such, but it helps to be authentic. It helps to be yourself because people like that much more, whoever it is, even at your, in your personal life. Uh, I, I'm sure, Kavita, even you can see through it, right? You'll know when a person is faking it. Maybe you can accept it, but you'll will, uh, you'll never stand out. Uh, so I think I would encourage people. And as I told you, what do I do differently? Why am I, as, as you did speak to a few of my colleagues from Tesco, and one of the things they bring, up, uh, bring about is my persona. Uh, the reason is they do know that I am not scared uh, to stand up for myself, stand up for my team, and I will say my opinion. And if I'm wrong, I'm not scared to apologize either. And I'm lucky that they, they see it as a positive note. 
Absolutely. I, I did get a lot more from different leaders, but I just chose three people and I said, let me share it. I'll put it up on LinkedIn. Oh, sweet. That is very nice. <laughs> Um, so you were you were saying that you know it's very important for women to be authentic, be who they are. But many a time, Vidya, when a woman is who they are, if they're a, see, when you're um, even a little assertive, you're considered aggressive, you're considered bossy, you're considered, um, you know, who does she think she is? I mean, I have heard this myself because uh, I'm I don't know if I'm as vocal as you, but I I also don't like to take. Um, shit from people I, I don't know if I can say that but anyway so but then you know you're considered aggressive and oh my god look at her she's fighting she's a, so how how can a woman um, be authentic uh, speak up for herself and yet get that respect you know how that backlash is a lot and that's why women tend to be that nice nice and let me please the person in front of me instead of saying hey no this is what I want so how do we change that culture and you are like I said, a formidable woman who has the, you know, you have everything to influence the way I think women leadership shapes up in the country. So, I mean, some tips, uh, anything you want to share, because I feel you're the right uh, um, example for this, you know. Oh my God, I'm going to get a swollen head at the end of this. <laughs> I wish I had my husband in kids sitting oh, I'll play it for him, not to worry. <laughs> So Kavita, th this is what I feel as you were asking this question, I was reflecting and I think you need to have allies. Mm. Um, so that really helps. Um, and uh, I, there was a study by Harvard, by the way, I don't know you, I'm sure you must have read it. They said when they asked, what are three uh, things which, on, which you would like to say, uh, wh what are the things which comes to your mind for a male leader and a female leader who were in negative terms. There were only three things which came up for male leaders, but there were 18, uh, 18 things which came up for women. Like, you know, 18 words used for women, bossy, aggressive, the same stuff that we already know of. Um, the, uh, one is you have to develop thick skin. You are, you, you have to make a choice. You want to be a popular leader or do you want to believe in your conviction and do what you believe in? Because that will come out very clearly when you believe in something, your uh, peers, your team, your, uh, your managers will all support you. And that's what happened with me uh, because I've always believed in whatever I've done. And second thing is don't play politics. Uh, so that, that's again, don't have hidden motives. Come out straight saying why you want to do something and why you really believe in it. That also helps. Uh, the third thing is having allies. They say, right, uh, uh, like Napoleon said, you always win the war, um, not in the battlefield, but before you enter the battlefield. Uh, so, ha you know, brainstorm with your uh, friends and you say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And I'm sure they'll give their point of view. So you have a 360 degree view of what are some of the questions which are going to come to you. And if you still believe in your conviction, you have to speak up because that will be uh, appreciated much more. Most of the times um, I have seen uh, very rarely, there's only been one leader who comes to my mind who couldn't appreciate the fact that uh, um, I, I was able to, uh, uh, you know, st stick, to or stick to my grounds. But for the most part, I can tell you all my team members who are mainly, mainly men, uh, my peers or my uh, bosses, uh, they're all excellent. Uh, they do support it. So these are the three tips. If I were to really say, you should, if you can follow that, it would help you. Okay. So I think of women. You're saying, you know, even with uh, when you are mid management, you start forming your allies all around you, your team, your managers, and uh, you know whoever else can, uh, you know, trust. You you have to build that pipeline of trust and respect amongst people. I think that's when people will stand up for you and say, okay, you know. I believe in what she's saying, right? But I'm sure still there must have been times, uh, even now, where people are really intimidated by you, uh, Vidya, uh, because, you know, um, it's not easy for uh, end of the day, especially men, I feel, um, to digest somebody like you who can speak their mind, can get the work done, can get the love of the people, can connect, because you become a threat, right? at some point. So how do you deal with that? You know, most women, I feel when I, you know, I'm a part of lean in circles, yes. and so many circles, they're all intimidated. You know, how do I even negotiate? Uh, my salary is a big problem, you know, and they deserve it. 
Absolutely. I think we women in general, including me, are very bad in negotiating because we do not believe in asking what we really deserve. We do not want to boast about the kind of work that we do. Uh, while we know our uh, sometimes our male counterparts do a much better job and they also have sponsors. So one thing what you should have is a sponsor in your organization because they will do the talking for you, especially if you are hesitant to speak about your uh, work. I think that's very, very important. And, may, uh, and I, they, you, should seek, you should seek out for mentors. You should speak, uh, seek out for sponsors and don't wait to get to mid-level. If there is potential in somebody, even at as soon as you start the organization, uh, start in the organization, reach out. That's that's an advice that I never got, uh, but I've uh, started implementing that quite a bit. Where I see if I see some potential person, uh, I believe that they should have a good sponsor because that will help them uh, and also help the organization because we will know whether what we are betting on are, is really right or wrong. Um, but but you had a different question also, right, Kavita? You were just asking that uh, asking about uh, before this. Be I I think I digressed. No, it's okay. I just said are people intimidated by by Vidya Lakshman? Yes, uh, <laughs> it's so you've <laughs> met me, you've seen me. We both are pretty tall people. Uh, so that itself, first of all, intimidates many. Second is um, my voice is pretty loud. <laughs> so uh, that that is the second thing uh, and i'm very comfortable with the skin of who i am absolutely uh, so and i think people see all of this so first starting is from a physical side they get intimidated they start forming perception which i have been a victim of uh, to many uh, people build perceptions i'm in general a happy person if you see me the energy that i have that's the first comment that i always hear and sometimes people can't believe that I'm really happy. And I remember in one of the organizations that I worked, many people were skeptical about who I really am because they couldn't believe somebody is so happy. But it's their problem. I didn't change myself for them. Uh, so just be yourself. You have to be yourself. Don't. Uh, and when you are yourself, then people will start accepting you for that. The second is um, I have always... Um, worked with people who don't believe in mediocrity and I don't believe in mediocrity either so when you are good at what you do um, that time people start respecting you they might not like you Absolutely. but they will respect you for what you bring to the table uh, and I'm sure I, I work with certain people who really love me and some people who don't like me but one thing they, that they will say is she knows her stuff integrity is very very high because those are my value systems um and uh, she is not scared to do something if she believes in it she will she will go ahead and that's your usb and if your usb is out there people will start accepting you and as i as i already told you kavita i have polarized view you're absolutely right it's always been there uh, i get into trouble quite a bit because of this nature <laughs> that i have just recently this week itself somebody told me that i was being very aggressive but it didn't matter to me i believed and i told him so and he was nice enough as soon as i said these were the reasons i had to do because somebody else had done something wrong and he supported me as soon as i said these were the reasons how would you have handled it mm -hmm. uh, but don't just as soon as somebody says you're aggressive don't take it personally it's their opinion uh, you even you have n number of opinions about different people but it's not necessary that it turns out true yeah, absolutely you know i think it was eleanor roosevelt who said do what you feel in your heart to be right you're going to be criticized anyway so anyways yeah, yeah so just just do it if you if you if your intention is good i think it'll it'll always uh, work out yes. so uh, so uh, have you had some failures in your life you know we're talking about all the good things uh, has you know failure is your best teacher pain is your best teacher is what they say so have you had any failures or pain in your corporate world corporate life that has taught you some good lessons that you have taken and um, made them success stories uh, of course yes i've had a lot of failures i keep continuously having even now um, you learn from some uh, and uh, you you realize that you were you made some bad choices also uh, so initially when I came back from US and I started my first job, uh, I remember working in the organization where I was trying to bring in agile methodology. 
and i thought that is one thing which would really help the organization and all teams because we had teams in us uk and different uh, continents and i said we all should follow it hmm. and let me tell you it doesn't work for everything especially more so in certain ki- kind of uh, so that was the failure but um, what i learned is yes uh, you cannot one size doesn't fit all and uh, if you if you share bad news as soon as you know then people would really like it yes it's not good for the organization i wish i had not done this done this mistake but as as soon as i put up my hand and realized my mistake and i said it my uh, ceo was sweet enough to say uh, it's okay um, of course he did give me some feedback uh, but um, and that was my learning that next time just don't be so confident in everything but try it out more uh, i have so many my projects have failed um and 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 what i learned from that is uh, i i didn't speak up initially when i started off in us and one of the big projects failed i was always hoping that things would turn and uh, i would give a more optimistic view i realized that that's not good it's much better to be pessimistic and say it up front then you set the bar correctly correct uh, the yeah, so that's one thing um, and even working with people because people who work closely with you really know you well they don't form perceptions uh, but the people who form perceptions are the ones who don't work closely with you and mostly a human tendency is to always find something negative absolutely uh, and that's why you have to be all the more careful and you have to learn your leadership style needs to change when you work with different people uh and that's something which is work in progress because uh candid people like me uh, who have nothing in their heart we, we i just um, uh, you know i'm so passionate and candid which is sometimes not a great combination because you're speaking and with a voice like this your voice can go up and down and you're very tall too yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> all that yeah uh, so sometimes when you're not working with people who know you very well they could get uh, intimidated uh, and another thing which i which uh, i don't believe in hierarchy kapita when i'm sitting in a meeting room you could be a graduate you could be the most senior person and i will be putting my case because i'm a sports person by heart and i want to win and if i believe i really want to know it's not about the title i never i never look at anybody's title uh, that's one thing if you were to talk to anybody they will say she will never throw her title i never even introduce myself with a title um and and that uh, i've learned it the hard way that when somebody is just joining the corporate they could be looking at hierarchy they could be looking so i'll have to tone it down a bit till they get more comfortable so these are some of the things that i'm still learning and you know working with people is the most difficult thing working on machines without any interaction with people is the <laughs> easiest thing to do because they have no emotions mm-hmm. how they feel uh so now i'm learning how they feel how i make them feel as a leader so I, hopefully i will be continuously learning and get, and uh, i love to have reverse mentors uh it's not just mentors at a different level seniority but i like to have i like to interact a lot with graduates and with uh, people who are in the workforce uh, because they teach you a lot with things changing so much and i think that has helped me quite a bit absolutely i think um, our like i mean you and i can to say that our children have become our biggest teachers yeah. they know more than us uh, and even when i was introducing you i just wanted to say and she happens to be director but then i said no i don't want to dilute it i worked hard for it so i said no i should give it that respect because there is so much more to you than just the title so thank you so yeah. much and you're right kavita when we walk out of our house or on when we are on the roads really cares i don't go around, i don't have a title badge on me like i'm just yeah. any any other person who's walking on the road absolutely and that's how i met you that's yes said, <laughs> without the I title i still remember where we met it was yes. at a party where we were trying some uh, i think kripal ka panna kripal's party yes yeah, right. <laughs> so uh, it was i i hope he gets back to having those parties anyway yeah. uh, so now uh, vidya a little bit on the personal front now so i must tell my viewers uh, you know uh, vidya is not the only rock star in the family she comes from a rock star family her husband her children all you know in their own right have achieved so much so 
little bit about uh, Salil, Samay and Sia, especially, you know, uh, Samay and uh, Sia have got these amazing awards recently, which have changed their lives. So please, please tell us about it. Yeah, yeah, Kavita, there's a lot of competition at home. Obviously. <laughs> Jokes apart, I think Indra Nui made this comment, right? She said the most important thing is to find the right partner. And this is a piece of advice which I really give everybody. So I met Salil when I went to study in Boston. And he is, again, uh, an executive. And I must say, uh, one of the reasons why I've been able to do what I've been able to do is because of him. As I told you, I, at first is my parents and my brother. My brother has played a very important role in my life. He has always encouraged me to be myself. And then Salil and his parents, it is not just him. Uh, so you have to learn to lean in. So people ask me this question very often saying, that they are, how do you manage two kids and a job? Uh, it is not easy. But when we were in US also, we were very clear. I was very clear. I, took, I did take time off for nine months when I had summer. But I realized I was not cut out to be that mom who can stay at home. And I have a lot of respect to people who are homemakers because it's, it's the most difficult job for me. I find going to work much more easier than being a homemaker. Um, so I leaned, I was leaning in on my parents, on my, um, on my in-laws. They helped me a lot until Samai was two years old. Then I saw to it, that since I wanted to have a career, I had a lot of help. Yes, I was fortunate enough and Salil uh, is also a great hands-on parent. Uh, I, I, I can't take credit for my kids, whatever they have done until now, uh, if we can call it as a success story, I think Salil has much bigger role to play because I travel much more. As he's more of a parent at home and he does a lot of stuff. He takes care. If uh, let it be cooking. He doesn't cook, but he sees to it that everything is on the table. Uh, he can take care of anything. He can run the house. And that's the way we brought up our children. My son can run the house on his own. And after a while, we were more dependent on him to uh, even take care of uh, his sister. Uh, and now that he's in college. So, you know, uh, uh, with some, uh, he won the breakthrough challenge and currently he's working in MIT. And another question which I constantly get from, uh, from the women is that, Vidya, is it okay for me to work? Am I spending enough time with my kids? And Kavita, you also know. You, I know you've, you're an entrepreneur. You've run quite a few things. You have your bucket list. You've gone for it. It doesn't mean that if you have an ambition and you go after it, you have to give up on something. You can do both these things. You just need to seek out for help. You also need to realize you're not a super mom and or a super woman and you will give up on certain things. There'll be days when your house is dirty or something is not going right. But your priority is if you're spending time with your kids, maybe I don't spend 40 hours with my kids, but that one hour or two hours in a day which I spend will be very, very qualitative. Uh, and that's what our focus, uh, Salil's and my focus is very clear. Our kids are number one. We will not compromise on that. And it's not that it's not necessary. We both have to be there. And luckily, by God's grace, I think uh, my kids are also very understanding. Uh, as you said, they are the best teachers. When I give presentations, they are the ones who are looking at my presentation, asking me to talk, looking at the way I speak and say this is wrong and yeah, and correct me mostly on my English and grammar, which is not always good. <laughs> but yes. But tell us about uh, Sia got an award. I think what last week, actually, I called to interview her and then I interviewed you. So she must be a little upset that mom, you know, won this competition. I said, I promise you, Sia, I'll do something with you. But now I'm going to interview your moms. <laughs> oh, so sweet. No, no. She, the, both the kids are very proud when, you know, when they see me uh, getting interviewed by you or by anybody. They love it. That uh... So yes, Sia, uh, Sia is more on the social um, uh, side too. so she she runs something called the soul warriors she started this around two, uh, two years ago 
and it all was her brain wave and she said that she started seeing some of these kids without footwear she did research and she she said why can't we just collect footwear she went and spoke to the cobbler she went and spoke to neighbors here to ask can you help with logistics came up with a warehouse so because of her work uh, she was recognized by the diana award which is a uk based um, it's after princess diana and uh, this year for 2021 uh, she she won the diana award amongst uh, there, there i think there were totally around 400 plus people around the world and there are around seven people uh, seven kids uh, in india this uh, award is given for uh, for people who are change makers in the range of 9 years old uh, to 25 years and she is one of the younger person who has started uh, taking this initiative and i feel very proud about it because i believe and i think uh, jack welch said that as a leader you can and uh, you can work on many things it's not necessary that you have to be a born leader but the key differentiator of a great leader is somebody who's a generous leader yeah uh and um, i'm hoping that with this empathy and being generous um you know she will she will have bigger impact uh with the communities i have no doubt about it and you know one of our common friends um, jacinta yes so i was talking to her yesterday and i was telling her i'm going to interview you and she was like oh i need to speak to vidya and tell her that you know um she did a good job as a mom raising a child like uh, sia so i said i should congratulate her so um it, i mean like you said it's not just generosity you're creating more leaders and your child could be one of those leaders she's somewhere seen you know what influence and what impact is and i'm sure she's got that from both of you as parents to play a bigger role in society both of your kids you know they're doing something outside of themselves so very i hope very so kavita it's a yeah. success many people get obsessed with success as only uh, studying well making money it's not all about that i mm-hmm. think we do need change makers out there who are taking care of the community who are taking care of the planet uh, so many things uh, that we and i think when we were growing up uh it 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 was we we did do the same things uh but now it's much more organized i feel absolutely yeah hey and now you have to tell us what is pb a personal best yeah. <laughs> yeah. so tell us what is what is the meaning and why that was you know in your introduction yeah. and I, because I, you I, said you're a sports person by heart yeah. so yeah. yes so, i'm a sports person i've i've be i play all the sports i've represented my school and college but lately after my kids were were born i have taken into long distance running and in long distance running you're alone uh, you're testing your mental and your bo- uh, and your physical pain as you can call <laughs> because you want to run for longer distances and what is your personal best you keep want to beat your personal best because you're not competing with anybody else mm-hmm. and i think in the corporate world also or in your personal life you would lead a much happier life if you stop competing with others and start competing with yourself or give it your personal best it's not it's not necessary you need to compete always and it's also not bad to be ambitious uh because that's again considered uh something which is not great and i i can proudly say i've always been very ambitious i want something and i've i've spoken about it i have it on my walls written i want to get there and i've been able to achieve because i work hard towards it the more i see i say okay fine i i, I have to meet this goal and I, that's another advice which one of my manager gave kavita it helps i don't know what, what how you do it but i always have goals for myself and i and i keep reading it sometimes i change my goals uh but i always have goals i also believe in that um if you see my table here it's just full of post its and you know uh, pictures and everything and i also and, and it, like you said it keeps changing but somewhere when you write it down i believe when you journal what yes. what is way you're giving it energy and it's also a reminder and i feel it happens i i'm a yes. true believer in this i actually hold sessions on journaling and gratitude and all these things so i'm a firm believer in that hey i wanted to ask you one more question before you know we end what is your take on empathy in today's world like covid has changed a lot of things and i have seen a lot of leaders have become um well people were so cutthroat talking about money and uh, rois now there's a lot more talk about empathy understanding uh, going the extra mile for people so what is your take on that vidya is that the new uh, one of the 
newest leadership qualities that uh, you know everyone should possess great question kavita uh, i i guess it started from 2006 right before if you were to look at pre 2004 something or most of the leaders only were focused about their iq oh. after 2006 is the term eq came into the picture yes. Yeah. but covid has really shown most of the organizations that are really doing well or did well during covid are the ones where the leaders were able to empathize not just as a checklist but they tr- truly took care of their colleagues communicating and empathizing and listening and being proactive i think this is a thing to stay i hope it really stays uh, that would be the differentiator for a great leader because intellectual a uh, capability is definitely needed uh, but uh, the eq the emotional quotient uh, is the one which is going to bring the different people because technology has disrupted everything the the way we are working who would envision that we would say that this is going to be stay maybe this is going to be our new normal we might not meet face to face at all it's not necessary for us to meet a uh, face to face because you can get anybody around the world how do you communicate in a virtual way with the uh, uh, humanoids coming into the picture it's not just with humans yes. how do you deal with all this kind of things with gig economy coming into the picture um, i think you have to be very aware of the surrounding aware of what uh, people need and i think that is going to stay and in a good way it should stay okay wonderful it's been so nice chatting with you so the, my show is all about passion and purpose so any advice for young people out there who are trying to break into tech to the field of technology i mean uh, something how do they develop their passion keep it up and you know break through in this field so actually kavita i would like to ask you a question you know passion comes in automatically it's not something that you develop right when you like something what you're really doing and that's why i encourage my kids and i encourage anybody who joins the organization please don't come with you know don't be close minded don't think that this is the only thing you can do or this is the only way you can do uh so for your passion to really come across be open to different ideas read different kinds of books if you don't like to read watch different kind of uh, pod, uh, of uh, podcasts or listen to different podcasts and watch your ted talks youtube so that's how you will get to see what you really like and when you like something the passion automatically comes see as just 14 to give an example we don't know what is her driver but we know when with soul warrior she's very passionate she's ready to work till 12 to etc for that so it, i think that comes purpose is very i believe it's important to have but it depends i've also seen people who develop their purpose much later on it's just been wonderful vidya any any last piece of wisdom knowledge anything you want to share with the world before we say bye um just just go for it i don't want to say anything but that's my only sense just go for it whatever you believe in just go for it Thank you so much uh, Vidya it's been such a joy to have you and um, you know everyone who's watching this video share it share it with other people in your life men women children let them get inspired you know there from what i got from uh, vidya's interview is define success in your own terms achieve it by your own rules and build a life that you're proud of you know don't wait for other people to define your life you define your own life and um there's nothing more i want to add i just want to say thank you to everyone who watched this interview and uh, i look forward to meeting you in my next interview and uh, vidya thank you so much for being with us today thank you so much kavita i had a lovely time to, uh, talking to you and learning from you thanks a lot take care thank you Please subscribe to my YouTube channel Kavita Garla